Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today in our co-inaugural episode, why the right can't win without cheating and why the system is rigged in their favor. Let's look at the past two elections. In 2018, 50.3% of the people who voted for governor voted for Democrats. Yet only 46% of governors in America are Democrats. In 2018, 59.3% of people voted for Democratic candidates for the Senate. Only 39.1% of people voted for Republican candidates. Yet the Republicans picked up two seats and control 53 of the 100 seats in the Senate. What? In 2016, Hillary Clinton won 3 million more votes than Donald Trump. But, Donald Trump won 56% of electoral votes. In fact, in the past 30 years, Republicans have won the popular vote only one time. What? How's that? How can a party that does not have the support of the majority of people be allowed to consistently rule in the minority? How can it be allowed to block sweepingly popular policy and replace it with widely unpopular policy? How can it be allowed to steal Supreme Court justices from Democrats and ram through unpopular and unqualified conservatives? Well, it's a number of things, and some of them I won't have time to address here, and some of them will eventually get their own videos. Oh, and for those of you running to the comments section, don't worry, I know I'm biased. The first couple of reasons are accidental. They are built into the Constitution, and by giving greater power to rural areas, they, by extension, give greater power to conservatives. By the way, just because they're built into the Constitution doesn't mean that they're good or that they shouldn't change. The Constitution has 27 amendments. That means that it's changed 27 times. Slavery was also built into the Constitution. Until we changed it. The Senate and the Electoral College are both based on states. And since rural areas tend to be more conservative than urban areas, rural states like Montana or North Dakota will be more conservative than urban states like New York or Massachusetts. But they also have fewer people. That's what rural means. I'm not surprising anyone by saying that there are a lot of states that don't have a lot of people in them. These nine states put together have a population of a little bit less than Illinois but they have a land area greater than that of India. The scary part though, is that they have 75% more electoral votes than Illinois, which again, has more people. And all of those electoral votes went to Donald Trump. Now, there's a lot of arguments in favor of the Electoral College, and most of them are stupid. And I'll probably make a whole other video about that one day, but in the meantime, just think about this. Wyoming has, 563,626 people and three electoral votes. California has 39,557,991 people and 55 electoral votes. That means that where one electoral vote represents a bit over 719,000 people in California, it only represents 192.5 in Wyoming. So when you go to vote for the president, just know that people in Wyoming essentially get four votes each. This disparity is even worse in the Senate. In the Senate, a person from Wyoming gets 68 votes. Seriously, here's my math. Do you know what that means? That means that you could win the presidency with only 22% of people voting for you, and you could win the Senate with only 8% of people. Imagine that you're at a meeting of whatever you're a part of, and there's 100 people there. 92 of you vote not to do something, and you do it anyway. I brought this up on Twitter once, and someone replied to me, Ugh, you don't understand. In the Senate, every state has two senators. That means that every state is equal. And that's true. In the Senate, all states are equal. But not all people are. What do we care more about? The second factor I want to address is gerrymandering. Named for Governor and later Vice President Elbridge Jerry, the OG gerrymanderer, gerrymandering is when district boundaries are drawn in such a way as to advantage one party over another. Say this is your state, 
It's 60% Democrats and 40% Republicans, and for some reason they all agreed to live in their designated squares. You could draw districts like this, and that would give proportional representation to each party. But, if you were working in bad faith, you could draw them like this, and give all five seats to the Democrats, disenfranchising the Republicans. Or, draw them like this, and give all five seats to the Republicans, disenfranchising the 60% of people who are Democrats. In 2016, an article by the Daily Kos found that 23 states had been gerrymandered to favor Republicans for state legislatures, with only 10 having done the same for Democrats. And 7 of the 10 most gerrymandered states in the country voted for Donald Trump in 2016. This system has given Republicans control over 32 state legislatures, enabling them to further gerrymander the states and to enact laws to suppress voter turnout. Perhaps one of the most egregious examples of this is North Carolina, where the 48% of North Carolinians who voted for Democrats in 2018 were crammed into just three of North Carolina's 13 congressional districts. Take as another example Austin and San Antonio, Texas, where these predominantly liberal cities have been carved up into small fragments, and each fragment is paired with vast swaths of conservative countryside in a concerted effort to disenfranchise the voters of Austin and San Antonio. Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump in Travis County by 37 points, yet only one of Travis County's five congresspeople is a Democrat. This is tantamount to taxation without representation. Gerrymandering is one of the Republican leadership's favorite strategies to continue to rule in the minority, alongside voter suppression. The Republican leaders over the past decade or two have passed a number of laws designed to make it harder to vote for minorities and young people. Minorities and young people are less likely to have a photo ID, so they pass laws which both make it harder to obtain a photo ID and require you to present one in order to vote. Does it seem fishy to anyone else that in Texas, a public school or university ID is not a valid voter ID, but a concealed carry permit is? These groups are less likely to be able to afford to take time off work. So Mitch McConnell refuses to institute a national holiday for elections, and they pass laws which allow employers not to offer time off work, and they restrict absentee and early voting. Minorities are more likely to be convicted of a crime. That's a whole other issue worthy of a video on its own. So Republican leaders disenfranchise those convicted of a crime? And perhaps most egregiously, they have been purging voter rolls and voiding the registration of millions of voters. These all come together to create conditions where Republicans can win with 39% of the vote. So Ian, what can we do? Well, first you can call your senators and tell them to pass the For the People Act, which went through the House a few weeks ago. Amongst other things, it clamps down on gerrymandering, institutes automatic voter registration and a national holiday, outlaws the purging of voter rolls, and reinstitutes key features of the Voting Rights Act. It's a good start, but we can't stop there. To really reform our system, we will need to increase the size of Congress, abolish the Electoral College, implement nonpartisan redistricting, grant statehood to Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia, and find a way to grant voting rights to those Americans who live in our Pacific territories. No taxation without representation, right? I've also included some links down below that you can donate to if you want to help. The big thing, though, is that we need to win elections, and we need to win a lot of them. None of this is possible if we don't. Fixing our broken system will require major change and we'll all have to work hard for it. In the meantime though, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next time on The Lucretia Report. Seek Semper Tyrannus. Hey guys, if you liked that, be sure to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter down below. See you later.